any any particular area you'd like to address first uh, with both of our audiences? I think, um, well, first of all, I'm just so thrilled to be here with you, Denzel, because you are somebody who literally, um, when my husband and I were at just a point where we weren't sure what our next move was, um, we had received uh, an unexpected $10,000 IRS bill. We had been working so diligently almost over well, several, several years, trying to dig ourselves out of some debt and doing the debt snowball and things in that regard and got came upon this unexpected bill with stuff with my husband's business. So that's a whole nother story. But when we received that, it just put me in particular in a real downward spiral because I was so focused on paying down debt and we were gaining some traction. And then it, it just kept feeling like more debt was coming our way as every time we would try to pay down something then it was like it was right back to us. And so I went into a dark space for a couple of days in the beginning of 2019. And after that, I just said, there has to be a different strategy. And being a believer and just somebody who prays, I kind of just literally had to come to Jesus moment and was like, please show a new way. And I wasn't a big YouTube person at the time. I had listened to a lot of podcasts, but I went in and I just started searching different ways to kind of run your money. And at that time when I found you, uh, I think you had 2000 followers. It was the beginning of 2019 and I just consumed your videos for a whole month and then set up a time to meet with you. And it was, it was surreal. I remember being in my education job at the time. Um, I was a teacher aide at that time. And I remember on my lunch break, scheduling the time to talk with you and kind of get the ball rolling for us. And um, it was just surreal. Like I'm talking to this guy, I'm watching, you know, and I'm a lot older than you. So just this, the whole thing was just like, it felt surreal, but it was, it was an answer to prayer. And it was just what our family needed to help us get the traction and um, yeah, just get the ball rolling in a different way for us and we were able to see success um pretty quickly so beautiful yeah. beautiful and it's it's been a blessing on on my end you know in the beginning it was just for most of my relationships that i have with clients were just purely transactional coming with a problem here's the solution here's yeah. the strategy and over time i start to get to know more things about my clients and like where they want to go and the different ideas that they have and it's typically not something that I'm like saying that I'm good at solving for, but like, it's pretty cool that once we build the foundation and we're on, we're like in alignment. Okay. We've, we know our numbers. We have our credit. We have our debt tool. We, um, you know, we're chunking, we're paying off these bad debts. We're looking at opportunities in the marketplace to invest once we're either out of these specific debts or completely out of debt. Right. And so it's, it's really been a blessing on my part to see you get, all those early achievements, right? And and get past mm -hmm. those early obstacles to now have conversation on, you know, increasing income, starting a business. How do we want to impact others? Who do we want to help? Who do we want to mm -hmm. serve? And so I remember just way back your early is your earliest desires to start a business, to want to help people and like just kind of bouncing random ideas and and now we're at a point where it seems like we're building a new foundation in a totally different aspect of business and and how it integrates with your life and the different things that you want to do and how velocity banking has really helped that all along the way to like really make that possible or at least see where the road is leading to right so I, I'm, I'm i'm like at that point i'm like oh wow like i'm seeing it i'm seeing the fruit come to life yeah and this, is a, this is a prime is example hot. yeah absolutely yeah because you know sometimes we expect when we're planting our seeds like i i feel like i've kind of watched your garden grow right i've watched your seeds that have been planted grow and it's been you know you're just a real legit dude you are a person of integrity i trust what comes out of your mouth i've followed you for four or five years now you know this is not the get rich quick scheme you know thing like <laughs> not that at where, all. you know <laughs> not at all you know it takes discipline it takes um determination it takes being wise you know all of those things and so i've just appreciated watching you grow and watching the seeds that you planted that it took time it wasn't an overnight success for you right 
but you've been so diligent in you know watering and tending to your people that have come your way and really pouring so much into us and i from the bottom of my heart just say thank you because it truly has changed me from the inside out and it's changing my our family tree and what we're going to be able to to do with our family just um you taking the time to teach this and now just my educator heart like when you find something that's worked and that you know can help other people i that's where i struggled for a while because i'm like oh, i don't know if i want to teach velocity banking mm -hmm. you know it's kind of difficult and zell's so good at it like i i feel like it's it can be difficult but you know i was just like you know but it's it's helped us and i know that i can break it down to a way that people can understand and figure out how to do this strategy you know with some mentoring and coaching because it does take that accountability piece um you know in this strategy for sure love it so for just for my audience um and yours as well like you mentioned found me around 2019 how long were we doing velocity banking for right what were the results right what if you can recall like just general yeah. estimation results on that and then at what point or was it certain videos that i was you know planting you know these early seeds on hey let's start a business or hey let's do this like was it a specific video or was it simply the timeline of velocity banking just kind of like how that strategy evolves into new things where you were like okay i'm ready to look at building a business for myself walking away from you know this career this job and into my my life's purpose or or really maybe you were already in your purpose but it was a pivot mm -hmm. where you can solve for greater impact so give us that little timeline there the, the results and then where did it like uh transition yeah. around what year okay so 2019 when we found you like i said we had just acquired a ten thousand dollar irs debt we had um forty thousand dollars of my husband's student loans um so and we had bought a house in 2016. So we actually, man, if we would have known this concept back in 2010, 11, we would not have had to go through our short sale, which yeah. this is a way with our economy kind of the way it is now, there are people who are sitting on a home equity line of, home equity line of credit, but they are not utilizing it in the way that Velocity Banking teaches. Right. So, Back up in 2008, we had we had owned our first home. We bought it in like 2002. We moved from Chicago to Columbus, Ohio. We bought our uh, a ranch style home. We had renovated it. We had poor, had our first all three of our kids there actually in this home. And 2008, um, we had just refinanced and got into an interest only loan, which was from a faith based organization and was helping us free up cash flow so that we could pay down debt. But unbeknownst to us, I didn't do enough research and the interest only loan portion. Well, we know what happened in 2000. Yes. So all of the cash flow we thought we were going to have only paying interest uh, was wiped out. And right. so we found ourselves both in private Christian education, barely making a one person income and having a mortgage payment that we actually could still afford to pay. But in the midst of that, my husband's job got cut in half. So he was already only making like $22,000 a year. We have three kids, uh, two at this point. No, three, we had our three kids at this point. And then it, his part-time job was, well, his salary was going down even more. And so we had to kind of draw a line in the sand and we had a home equity line of credit, but see, we were seeing it as a loan, as a payment. We weren't mm -hmm. seeing it as a way to use it, like our checking account. So if we would have known this, we could have maybe saved that as a rental and moved on, you know, and had our first income property because it was, a, it would have been a really good rental, but you know, can't go back to the past and change it. But man, right. those, those are some people right now that might be in a similar situation that have a home equity line of credit sitting there, but they're seeing it as another debt payment. They're not right. seeing it as a debt weapon. And so, um, so then fast forward, we, we ended up having to rent, um, you know, and we're, we're in our mid thirties. So this was a very humbling time. Okay. So we were doing the debt snowball method during this time. We moved from owning a home, going through a short sale, going to a rental where we thought we'd be for about two years. Well, my husband, it was a PE teacher and he did painting on the side. So every summer when he was off, he would do painting with a guy from our church. They had, he had built a business. And so long story short, um, teaching positions were not opening up for my husband. And so we just kind of looked at each other and were like, look, this painting, 
you know, you can make whatever you want to make. If we start marketing and you start going out and building up this business, um, you know, the sky's kind of the limit there. So we ended up being in our rental three more years because as you know, when you're starting a business, in order to get a mortgage, you have to show two to three years of solid business income, right. which took more time. So our rental situation went from 2011 until 2016, where we were able to get on a pretty good pretty good steady ground there. And we saved like $30,000 over that time. My husband built up his business. We went and bought our home, um, which is a whole nother awesome story. But long story short, we didn't even go through a realtor. We found like put a letter on the door type of, type of thing and got the home that we moved into. Okay, so that was 2016. We had taken that money that we had saved and we renovated the home um, at that time. And, um, and so our mortgage pretty much stayed what it was. So I think when we met you, our mortgage was like at um, 216,000, maybe roughly somewhere around then. Um, I have these numbers somewhere. I probably should have pulled them out, but I think it was around $216,000. Yeah. And we owed the $40,000 in my husband's student loans. And we had that big $10,000 IRS bill. And I remember I, I, I saw recently, I know when we first started, the numbers were around like 298,000 total debt that we owed at that point. I'm actually, um, so I'm actually I'm looking something. right now to see. Are you? Okay. Yeah, 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 I want to see if I can. Uh, this is a spreadsheet from January 24th, 2019. Okay. And um, let's see if it shows it on here. Uh, okay, yeah. So total debt, $298,320.77. You've had, you know, yes. the IRS debt, student loans. Um, we've had, you know, credit card debt, a... Uh, yes, a lease and so the the home mortgage was 205 539 84. Oh okay. So then, yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, so then when we had bought the home, okay, we I think we bought it at 216, so that would make sense because from 2016 right. and not 2019, you can see we only pay down. I mean, it's still not terrible, but you know. Right. Now that we know that velocity banking how much faster, man, we could pay that down. <laughs> yeah. So um, so we were right away in the first month that we worked with you because we had, I think, 4,000 in savings. Um, I don't, yeah, 4,000 in savings. And then we took that. We had gotten approved for a $39,000 HELOC um, at a very low rate for this first few months. And so we took that $4,000. We paid off that IRS deck that chunk that back in there and then we also on our second chunk what you scheduled for us to do was to pay off my husband had two separate student loans one of them was a bigger payment and one was a very small pay, a smaller payment and that we actually kind of we still have that one because it's so minuscule and our mindset has shifted so much now that we're okay with that i think there's 19,000 left so we had the second chunk you had us do after the irs debt was I think it was $21,000 to one of those student loans. So we wiped that out. So I think by that summer, we had kind of recouped that money just doing Velocity Banking for like February, March, April, May, June. Um, with my husband being a painter, his income, um, we spread it out over the year now, but we know the summer months, he gets some more jobs that we can just put chunks in, you know, to the home equity line. So that's what we did which kind of helped us pay that down faster um, over the summer months. And then we started doing some chunks towards our mortgage. So at that Around point, what's, what, where are we at now in the timeline? This is this probably is... 20, golly, it's so crazy to think I that know. this was right before COVID. Right before COVID, <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. Right before COVID, which, oh my goodness. So what, yeah, well, okay, so we're probably now, we probably started doing some chunks towards our mortgage, mortgage at the beginning of 2020. Yep, because I have And then we had on... to put a pause on that. Yeah, go ahead. I remember, mm -hmm. so I think, um, yeah, I'm looking at, I think 2020, it, it looks like we we're, we're starting to either attack the mortgage or plan to start hitting on the mortgage. Mm -hmm. And then I think yeah. around 2021 is when we moved into infinite banking, right? Or- Yeah, well, we ended up- We ended up not- We did not pull that- right, right, right. We didn't yes, pull the trigger, because, right, because, right. yeah, you, yeah, we did okay, not- Okay, so before we get that, ahead of ourselves, we, before we get ahead of ourselves, yeah, stick, stick to the- so. So we're right yeah. before pandemic, 
right we're starting we've wiped out irs debt at this point um majority of the student loan debt whatever credit card debt and you're pretty much rocking and rolling yeah. with the home equity line of credit at the thirty-nine thousand. do you remember what the interest rate was yeah. at the time i'm pretty sure they were much lower than I, yeah they were i think like our fixed rate like i think our intro weight was like 1.99 percent if i remember and then it went up to around four no more than five percent at that right. point but still once you know the the simple interest formula yeah, yeah. right it you're, was you're like, never okay, paying so whatever the how, rate yeah yes yeah, so that was like oh that's no no it's so much easier and then what this really did for us denzel which this is where it just i didn't realize how much of a mind shift i was going to have using this strategy because before like my husband i never fully we never fully kind of got on board together with the snowball method um we had gotten very disciplined we knew how much our you know our expenses were and all of that but it had gotten to a point where i was so focused on paying down debt that i wasn't really living anymore and it kind of put us a, a really honestly a strain on our marriage where it we went through some bumps because of that um, my husband, he's a very hard worker. You know, he owns his own painting company. So he works long hours in the summers. And he just felt like when he would get this money and then it would just go to debt and we never could see it again, it wasn't very motivating for him. And I kind of didn't get that because I was just so focused on, well, we got to get out of debt. You know, we got to get out of debt. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so what this allowed us to do was when he saw, okay, he made an extra, let's say seven grand. Well, when we put, when we had paid off debt, now that debt is going away and he's seen half of his student loan went away in one fell swoop. Now we have to recoup that, but now that money's going back into the HELOC and we have access to that money access. again. Mm -hmm. So that was the game changer shift where he just fully got on board. He was like, oh my goodness now it started to click for the both of us right mm -hmm. and it was just like that more abundant mindset versus that scarcity which i was so focused on never having enough and it has brought this freedom to say you know you still have to be wise and live within your means and of course all of those things right but for example then COVID hit 2020 my husband is a self you know employed painter we had another guy that works works with us we didn't know were jobs going to come in? You know, I'm an educator, I'm in teaching. So I knew my paycheck was steady and I moved to online teaching with all the other educators at that point. But my husband's business, we didn't know. Are people going to have you in your home to paint? Like he's probably not going to have business. And this was the first time like we realized the power of this because we had almost full access to our home equity line at that point. And we that had gotten it paid down. Buys you time. Yeah. So we didn't yeah it bought us time so we were like okay well we have almost how much of emergency fund i think at that point our expenses were like under five grand so five ten fifteen twenty twenty five i mean we were talking we had at least six months if we had to live off of that we were able to mm -hmm. um and thankfully i think it was just about three weeks to a month that he didn't really have business and so it was like this little tiny hiccup which before would have put us in this downward spiral like how are we even going to feed our family type of thing right right so it really has it really freed us in our mindset to say okay we we're okay we'll get through this we'll weather the storm like everybody else and then blessings came right like the ppp things and, and different things that ended up benefiting us as a small business owners so we were able to kind of not really see a loss during that time love it love it yeah and I think the other, I don't want to say the magical part of velocity banking, but there's this unintended reward in the midst of crisis when crisis does hit, whether we like it or not, whether no matter how much money we save, there's going to be times in everyone's life, those who are watching that are, uh, you know, catching this recording, there's going to be some type of obstacle that no money can solve or mm -hmm. you're just not going to have the capital. And so you're going to be in a position where you have to borrow. That might be from friends and family. That might be from a credit card. That might be from a bank and a loan or some some you know type of situation. And so what Velocity mm -hmm. Banking shows you how to do is not only pay off debt really fast in in good times where income is flowing in and you're cash flowing, but also in bad times you can become an effective borrower. So let's say you're in a position where. You're like, hey, I don't have an option. I have to borrow. Well, now if I got this, you know, $39,000 HELOC, 
you know how to withdraw funds little by little by little by little to just cover expenses uh, keeping yep. all this keeping all the same habits that we learn from the seven baby steps and and dave ramsey and just mm -hmm. frugal living keep all of those in place because you have to <laughs> in, a, in a crisis mm -hmm. type of a situation rather mm -hmm. than where most people will go out and get like a big ten thousand dollar loan or twenty thousand dollar loan and it's deposited right into your account so now it feels like a windfall of cash and a lot of us don't mm -hmm. realize how costly that is in in the long run you're trying to solve a short-term mm -hmm. problem with a big loan so to speak rather than mm -hmm. having the big loan but not having to use it all right and mm -hmm. in your case it was only having access yeah. right mm -hmm. in your case it was only a three week one month uh type of a hiccup i've had mm -hmm. so many other clients yeah. over the years where it was three six nine months of you know slow mm -hmm. or you know one spouse like you mentioned earlier losing half the income or getting uh laid off or furloughed or fired even and like the amount of time it bought them on top of having whatever emergency savings it it was mm -hmm. that unintended like reward that came with it um so that's just one of those unique things about velocity banking once you expand your mm -hmm. mindset on the conversation of debt itself and using debt and paying it off or having it leveraging it that kind of case so yeah great job there mm -hmm. so now we're in COVID, right it's it's you know mm -hmm. we're a couple months in now had a little hiccup but then recovered and what's going on at this point now you're we're fully focused on the mortgage at this point in COVID season yeah we did we chunked that down um to about 186 i think yep and I then thought. we start mm -hmm. yep then then um so this was the other thing and i'm sure there's some older parents well you know that that have we were just never at a spot where we were able to put money aside for college for our for our our children mm -hmm. um and so our mm -hmm. oldest daughter is in her freshman year of college so that was something that you in 2020 night because i'm like no sorry this year is okay. her first year 2023 so, um, okay. so yeah so what i'm saying is 2020 we started to kind of look at things differently like because now we knew how to use velocity banking and watching some more and more of your content um and being entrepreneurs and just in our spirit right my husband owns his own company i've had this entrepreneurial spirit like those who know me are watching this lord only knows how many businesses i've tried to do and sell mary Kay and all types of different things right but um anyway so we started to say okay we can take this and how can we 10x our money how can we begin to leverage okay the access we have right how can we begin to do that so that kind of started shifting and i would say we kind of got through 2020 paid down our debt our mortgage to that amount oh then this is what happened i totally forgot about this we got into the all-in-one loan okay yes so we, gotcha that's what we did we, instead Boom. of doing yeah. infinite banking I, yeah i was like wait a minute I'm missing. we got into the all-in-one loan so that took some time to understand and really wrap our head around that um and so we did that for all i guess that would have been 2021 just up until recently because we actually in january of this year just closed on what we would say is our dream home and and so it is a mile from our old house so we went from renting right in 2011 uh -huh. mm -hmm to oh no renting from 2011 to 2016 moving a mile from that rental into that home and now another mile away into a bigger home that is all in the same neighborhood like same school district all of that we just wanted some more space so i could have an office and, and we're still renovating getting kind of things ready yeah. um but we just had this vision it was on our vision board that we wanted um you know kind of our dream home when so did you make that vision here, board um well we've made several but this one was in just this last summer of 2022. wow so summer manifested that fast wow yeah so, that, that, this story was uh, uh, phenomenal <laughs> so, wow yes. wow okay so we're um so 2020 no, we're no. we're we're paying off debt by 2021 we get the all-in-one loan which is like a first lien heloc and a very unique type of a product you you we basically moved that whole 180,000 whatever was owed plus closing costs and it's now in the all-in-one what was the credit limit that you got for the all-in-one 
and what was what was owed at the time do you remember and this is 2021 now and and again this is where the shift occurred so for those that are watching usually it's velocity banking pay off debt really fast increase cash flow get your credit up know your numbers personal financial management right getting the foundation and then all of a sudden it about a year and a half goes by so from 2019 to uh mid 2020 and then in 2021 so yeah a good two-year window of just debt elimination and then we start mm -hmm. to shift towards 10x our income expansion abundant mindset very very cool mm -hmm. how adaptive the, the concept is for us all while simultaneously continuously paying off debt via the all-in-one loan so what was owed and what was the credit limit if you remember um the credit limit i think that we got for the full access um was 265 i was trying to remember that makes sense or 265 yeah. i think it was 265 because i remember in my notes here you, you said so the value of the like, home was like 280 yeah. or something like that so yeah so it went from um let's see we had a $39,000 HELOC to now we had access to like 70 or 80,000 or something like that you know with the all of one which we know with the 66 percent rule we wouldn't use all of that but that's right. what we had available mm -hmm. um so so yeah so we did that and I, that was 2021 I believe that happened that summer of 2021 yeah. so we had yeah. then paid down the mortgage to 186 with some of the costs and things that went into that I think when all was said and done, we had like 195 was the balance after we had, I can't remember what the fees, I don't remember, but I just think it was around 195 at that point. Yeah. So now- um, With the all of one. Right. Mm -hmm. So now um, through from 2021 all through 2022, you're doing velocity banking on the tool itself while also coming up with ways to increase the income, right? Mm -hmm. So yep. by so now fast forward to today we're in 2023. Yeah. What's owed yep. on, what's owed on the all in one and what have you done in terms of of business this is where I want to get into the fun part is reason why we're actually mm -hmm. on camera recording now because of some of the things that you've done in the last few months right and just the progress you made in that so go through that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. So we now since we have a new home we got out of the all-in-one loan because we had we we got a mortgage for this new home right okay. so we're actually in the process right now of we just literally renovated the home so my husband obviously being a con kind of contractor painter um I, I i should i should just show you this is just kind of cool if you i hopefully it's not i just got to show you this this is one of my favorite like things that we did here okay so uh, this was all he, you could see we still have some of uh, the stuff out here that we're renovating but this was all like wood oak that he turned um you know re renovated the whole fireplace here and painted it all white so we've done a lot of updates already so the equity that we're going to have in this home is we haven't even checked to see what it's be like we just did all this in february march so we are back to kind of just stacking money in savings why we look to get uh oh did i lose you no no you're good i was, I was just oh, showing okay. the audience the full view of that <laughs> so they can yes. see okay one other thing I have to show you real quick because this was on my vision board okay our old home when we used to walk in was literally you walked in and as soon as I would invite guests in I had to shut the door to let them in because we had stairs right here and so there was no space to welcome people so my daughter and I one of our things was like we want a grand entryway <laughs> we want people when they to the house to feel that they are welcomed right and i'm not shutting the door on you right when you come in so this is the new entryway um sorry it's lived in you know and then this will be my office you can see i'm i'm, I'm, I'm jimmy rigging things right now but it's a real deal this is some numbers i have on the board i've been working oh, yeah. on youtube video i don't have my studio set up yet you know all of that i mean i'm just getting started um I but love. this this right here is just um just a vision that is now manifested um and before if you would have told my husband and i and even in 2016 when we had got our other home that we would be living in our dream home by 2023 um i i don't know in my mind if i would have been able to get there <laughs> and i was faith you know i mean but it was just the money part i didn't see how would we be able to afford this kind of a home you know love it so, so anyway. so now are you at a point where we, so we gave up that debt tool the all-in-one 
and you also used it to get the property. Is that how that kind of happened? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So did we sell it? Is that what happened? You sell the yeah, property? Yeah. So we oh. ended up selling. Um, so we we did we were thinking about keeping it, but we it, it was just the way it all worked out. Some neighbors that were needing a bigger home right when we were moving here, like it was just one of those God things that you just don't even. It was just like all lining up, right? So. Mm -hmm. Real quick, I just have to share this. My my daughter and I over that Christmas break, so this is just two months ago, three months ago, right? We went looking at Christmas lights and we started to tell, this is our college student um, who's in her freshman year, that dad and I are kind of starting to dream of uh, more space. I want to have an office, like just some of the things that we wanted, right? So we went looking at Christmas lights and that's when we saw this house. And so, um, I didn't even go and look at it on Zillow or anything. I just kind of thought, oh yeah, that's a nice house, but we didn't even pursue it. So I'm a teacher and I'm on my last day of work before our break and my daughter texts and said, hey mom, do you want to go see the Bricky house tonight? We call it the Bricky house because it's all brick. And, um, and I said, well, dad, you know, has to coach tonight. Um, I don't think he'll be able to meet us and I would want dad to come with us, right? And she said, well, it's at like 5.45. And I said, okay, let me text him. Long story short, we got here. And when we walked in, you know, we, we like to renovate homes and fix them up and flip them. And we've been doing some of that now. So that's where some of our, that's where we put our money is kind of into real estate and being able to earn passive income or work with investors to flip. Oh, and nice. so we saw the potential right away in this home. Yeah. So it came at the perfect time because if you remember at Christmas, we, well, here in the Midwest, we had a terrible storm come through. So we were basically the only offer on this home. And in our area, like houses are still going like that. Um, and so long story short on my husband and I's 25th anniversary, which by the way, congratulations on your engagement. I... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're about 25, aren't you? I don't know what we've been 27 married. now, 27. Yeah. Okay, 27. Yeah. Oh, that's mm -hmm. awesome. You're at a fun phase. Um, and so anyway, on our 25th anniversary, we surprised the kids. Two of our two younger kids did not know we were getting a new house. They did not know this all <laughs> happened. And so it, it's been quite, um, quite an awesome story. And the day we got home from the inspection here on our anniversary, I got a text from a mom saying, you know, before this gets out public, I just want to let you guys know we're putting our house on the market. So this is January 3rd. We had not told even our neighbors. I think, I don't even know if we had told my family yet that we were moving. It all happened within like 10 days. I mean, that's how fast this all lined up. Wow. And so, um, cause we weren't expecting to move. We were thinking over the summer, well, you know, I'm a teacher, we'll have time. Right. Like, and it just came. And like mm. I said, we just knew it was the right mm. opportunity. And knowing this area enough and living here, we knew the equity we would have and just the tool, you know, just all that we've learned and we'd be able to apply here. So anyway, it's an investment as well for us. Um, but, the, um, the, I got the text from the mom and I was like, what are the odds of this? Like they're putting their house on the market tomorrow. They want to stay in the area, but there are no homes available. And I knew our house was big enough to be what they were needing from their family move. Cause one of my daughters babysits for them. So I let it sit for like a day and just a day. And the next day I text her and I said, Hey, you know, this is so crazy, but we're in the same boat right now. And, um, nobody knows we're moving. Our house isn't even on the market yet, but if you and your husband want to come take a look, let me know. So long story short, Denzel, that's who got our house. So it literally was just such a blessing for them. They know all of our neighbors. Yeah. We stayed in the neighborhood. We're just a mile away. Gave us the more space we needed and wanted. And it's just showing people what's possible and showing it has been a huge thing for us in our mindset, right? Like look at where we've been able to go. And if we did not know this strategy, I don't know that we would have been able to do this, you know? Wow. Wow. Um, and, and yeah, that neighbor that moved into your old home, are they also like, did you like drop a seat in there? Like, Hey, if you need help on, you know, paying this thing off. <laughs> Some dead yeah, animation. right. Exactly. <laughs> I, I have, I, I've started my YouTube channel. So, um, I actually wanted to have her on at some, some point. It just didn't work out yet. Cause they just moved in March. So we had our house okay. all the way. Like this has all been so recent. Like we literally wow. just moved in here at the end of February. Yeah. 
Um, so, um, but yeah, definitely. And, and I've been helping neighbors now who saw, right. They've watched us transform our story. They've watched this. And, and I do want to say like, it's not about, I'm not about like getting more and more and more like, that's not like my heart. And I really want that to come across because, you know, I lost my mom in, you know, in 2021. And um, you can't take any of this stuff with you, right? This is so fleeting. So, but it's more about what it's done for my vision and wanting to help other people and the freedom. Um, yeah, we have a bigger space and, and we want to use it to bless and welcome others and to do some business ideas and things that we have. But my still heart behind everything right is to live we only have one shot to live and to impact people along the way and to bring hope and different possibilities and open up mindsets and shift maybe somebody who feels stuck how you can move past that you know you were that cry for hope that we were looking for um really were that cry for hope and i i know that there are people that's why I know I have to teach this yep. because there are people just like me who are like, what are we going to do? We might have to short sale or foreclose on our home and they might have a home equity line sitting there. I, if I don't tell people, I would like, I just couldn't, it was like, I couldn't keep this down. It just felt like it yeah. has to come out of me wow. because it's going to help people. Right. And I felt like when I was suppressing it, like, I, you know, like in 2019, I was like, oh, I think I want to teach this, but mm. I didn't have the confidence at that time to be online. Mm. I have had to go out of many comfort zones. And the way you go out of your comfort zone is by action, by action, little action. So those little reels, every time I do one, it's not super comfortable. <laughs> this is not, you know, I'm getting more comfortable, but I just had to say, I don't care. I don't care anymore because this is, this somebody needs this message. It's not yeah. about me. You are right? a prime, and prime example of just hitting the red button on the phone and just recording because I've seen the content. I've I've watched. <sighs> and I'm like, oh yeah, she is winging it right now, and I just love it because I am your yeah. your ideal client out there that that other mom, that other you know husband wife out there, like they also don't care about all the aesthetics they're like what the heck is this lady talking about HELOC dead eliminate like her story oh my god we're around the same age same situation I was in a short sale or I'm about to face for and she's telling me there's a solution and a way to get it done and it, it, it it's gonna look rough because they're in a rough situation so to them it's nothing it's like hey as long as I can hear what she's saying <laughs> like I'm taking my notes you know and so that's just mm -hmm. amazing of what you've been doing over the last couple months just getting the content out there and it was a it was a calling on on my part to start planting seeds in some of my clients that at the slightest hint were like i think i want to teach this or you know i can't do what you do then zell or i'm like whoa 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 whoa, whoa. let me let me lean in a little bit more here because this person is is illustrating characteristics that i was illustrating and now i'm at a point where it, it can't just be me saying all of this information i need to actually build up some leaders in my community mm -hmm. with and the clients that i'm working with to say listen yeah. i need you guys to go out there because you guys are actually more credible than me i've never had a mortgage i've never been in a short sale mm -hmm. i've never had a foreclosure i've never even owned a HELOC before. I, I've never had any of these things yet. All these people are coming to me hmm. for it where they really should be coming to my clients for it that have lived it, have had the stress and overcame that stress and mm -hmm. got spouse on board, got the kids on board, made the vision board. I mean, all this stuff. And I'm like, God, hey, however I can leverage my platform for my audience watching right now, like this is a call for leaders, you know, and you're one of them and you're out here you know, showing and having workshops at your house and doing trainings, one-on-ones. I mean, this is just insane. And what I you know, love about so it, I love the ministry about what you're doing as well, because yes. you're like, look, yes. we're generating income over here, passive, and it's feeding the lifestyle of how I want to intentionally live and impact these other parents or, you know, whoever your ideal client is. I think it's women, certain types of women in mm -hmm. situations that, you know, want to 
you know, really come out of their comfort zone and be them, be their full selves, you know? So what were you going to say? Yeah, I was going to say, um, I kind of lost my train of thought, but with, when my mom passed away and I think I shared this with you on another call, but yeah. I had a very, um, spiritual encounter where we'll just say I was challenged to go back to the last time that I truly felt gratitude in my heart. And I was transported right back into the room. I had never been in a room. I've lost several dear people that I love, but I had never been in the room as somebody's transitioning from here to the next life. It was some of the most holy sacred ground I could ever have had the privilege to be a part of. And in that moment, when I was transported back in the room with my dad and my sisters, my mom, this time, she her body was on the bed, okay? <laughs> but she was healed and whole and in heaven. Like I, I, I don't, you know, I've never been there, right? But, I, but she was her healed and whole self. And my mom, you know, bless her heart. Like I just know that she wasn't truly free to be herself here on earth, just from some wounds and some trauma and some stuff she went through where she held back a lot. And I saw her as her vibrant, full, healed and whole, just embracing herself. Like, I, I don't even have, it's hard to even put into words. And in that moment, what she said to me is she said, Amanda, you have to go for your dreams. There is nothing to fear. And see, one of my dreams, Denzel, like you just don't even know how much this has been in my core, was to teach this kind of stuff to people about finances. And once I found Velocity Banking, like this is what I want to teach, but I didn't have that confidence. I didn't have that um, thinking, oh, and I'm a teacher. So it sounds kind of <laughs> weird, right? Because I teach right. students every day, but it, it's, mm -hmm. it's a different type of thing to put your vulnerable self out there. Like I can go teach my third graders math and reading, you know, and I love it and I love what I do. I'm still doing that career. I teach special ed and it's just, it fills me up every single day. Um, but I kept suppressing this desire. Oh, but I, I can't do YouTube or, oh my gosh, I don't want to put myself out there. What are people going to think? Or who would even want to let, you know, all that stuff that we feed ourselves, all that negative chatter. Right. And I suppressed it. And I, in this moment, it was literally like something shifted in my whole core of my being. When my mom came and spoke that message over me, it was like the validation I needed. It was there is nothing to fear. Who cares what people think? If it's helping, if it's helping somebody, it's going to help somebody. Um, and and I just got over myself. I don't know how else to say it, but yeah. I'm, I I don't care. Like I'm I'm gonna not be perfect. I'm not gonna say everything mm -hmm. perfectly. But that's the authentic piece that I was always drawn to you about, right? And that's where I'm still learning. Like if my YouTube videos aren't perfect, who cares? Like I hope people resonate with my heart and my spirit yeah. and what my heart behind what I want to do is teach you how to run your money differently to bring freedom to you and your family. That's my, that's my passion and my heart. And since I have not suppressed it, I can't tell you like the life and the joy and the opportunities that come and the people I'm attracting because I'm not suppressing my calling, right? I'm letting it flow out. And now it's like people are coming and, oh, yeah. and I'm putting myself out there, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but even so, like, this is just so cool. Like my principal came to my dream. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my wow. <principal. laughs> he cool. would have told me like, yeah. I'd be teaching my principal a concept. Like she's amazing, you know, and she's one of those down to earth. You don't feel like, like she just, she's just an amazing leader, really amazing leader. Just think um, about, but I thought, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Think about like that preparation 2019 watching videos from some kid from somewhere you never even heard of never like never we haven't even met in person yet right like just total no, strangers total strangers 2019 all this preparation how how god holy spirit the father is is prepping you to now be able to speak to people that you may not have felt qualified to speak to in such an authority an authority position where you're now talking to your principal the principal has to come down to the to the teacher level they have to become a student again and here you are a teacher i mean this had you not done all that pregame work right we talk a, you know i talk a lot about velocity banking pregame work but there's more pregame work yeah. in terms of your business and planning and all this the, the mindset so had you not done 2019 2020 2021 2022 to now having your principal come, 
Had you not done all that, she would not have been blessed with your gifts. She would have looked the other way and who knows what financial position um, they would be in. And, and whoever other clients you're working with now, like they would have not been able to access mm -hmm. your gift had we not done all that pregame work. So there's another, another call out to the people watching this that have you know stayed this whole entire time listening to other people's stories like yourself to say you know what you're right denzel i got i gotta step this up and then these people know exactly who i'm talking to i'm talking to exactly the people in our group uh, that are trying to become coaches as well just like yourself that haven't started their youtube channel because they're worried um or you know th you know what do i talk about or you know uh, which should be the first video i'm like just record it get, get get it recorded and i promise you we can we can um you know post it out once you've looked at everything but the point is to start you, you know we don't even necessarily have to put it out there just yet but get the material recorded documented uploaded you can you can unlist it and just have it stored in your studio and just get enough footage until you're like okay, I'm ready, you know, but you're never going to be ready if you don't, if you don't do it. All right. right. <laughs> yes. You have to take the action, right? It's like, mm -hmm. you can sit and then this is where I was stuck because I was just sitting for all these years. Like once I got this concept, I was like, this is what I need to be teaching. And then I'd be like, I would get this close to Denzel. I have, I can't even tell you how many journals, journals oh. and journals of like what I want to talk about and things I want to do. And then I would just suppress it. And I'd be like, Oh, mm -hmm. Oh, I, I, just, I would just start to believe the, you know, believe all the thoughts, the negativity, mm -hmm. the no, no, no. And, but it was like, what I realized is I can sit there and nothing's going to happen, right? You have faith requires action. You can't, you can't oh. just sit and do nothing, mm -hmm. right? You have to take a step. And so that's what I just said. I'm going to take one step. Okay. Then I'm going to take the next step. Mm -hmm. And so like, I just put this challenge out for the month of March. This is what you're talking about on my Instagram channel. And I just made a commitment to myself, just to myself. Every day I'm going to do, okay, we're in March Madness. So I called it Money March Madness. And I'm like, okay. every single day I am making a 31 day commitment to post something every day about finances or about my life, something like that. I love it. And there were days where I was just like, I don't feel like doing this today. <laughs> you know, like I hard news about mm -hmm. and or, you know, just real life was happening. This is not what I want to do is put myself on camera right now, but I made that commitment, right? And I just said, it's the small little steps. Then I also in that same month had two velocity work workshops at my house. Now I only had like one, I had two people, one I had four, you know, and to me, sometimes I can get hung up on like, well, I don't have a million followers or, you know, it, and that's where I just have to take a step back. You know, it's one step at a time. Yeah. I'm planting seeds right now. And, and to me, it's about who can this impact more so than how many people can I have follow me? You know, I think that's something that people could get caught up in as well, right? It's like, well, I don't have that many followers. Well, I don't have that many followers, but that doesn't mean you can't make an impact. Even if it's a small number, you could be changing a whole family tree. <laughs> like that's a huge impact that could go on for like, you've helped change our family tree, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, and so it, it's not always about the number of people you're influencing. It's about the impact you can impact. make in the people, but you have to be willing to go out of your comfort zone. So that would be my challenge to anybody on that fence is go. It's not comfortable. I'm not going to say it is, but the more you do it and you put in those reps, you're going to get more comfortable. And I have a lot of growth to still do and a lot of things to, to get better in but oh, yeah. I'm putting it out there and I'm not suppressing it anymore. Right. I love it. I love it. So tell us about your business now, like the core of it. Um, what are these workshops that you're doing? What's, what's the, yeah. you know, the channel, give us the name, where do we find you? All that good stuff. Like yeah. give us the breakdown you. Of, okay. of your business now. What does it look like? And what are you looking to do with this? And who, who do you serve? Give us the whole. Oh yes. Oh my God. This is like, I, just so just so excited to get the ball rolling here so as i mentioned my mom was a huge inspiration so my channel is called inspire her with amanda um and so it's just inspire with h-e-r that's what i want to do is i want to inspire her to freedom and finances and also in our mindset so money and mindset kind of my two things i want to focus on 
Um, my main thing I'll be doing is teaching velocity banking, but then also helping people overcome things, right, with their mindset. Love um, it. And so you can find me on Instagram. It's just my name, Amanda Pride 23 um, on Instagram. And then my YouTube is Inspire Her with Amanda. And I'm just getting it started. So I think I only have three videos out there, but I have like, I'm working on one right now. I just showed you, um, have some things in the works. And then I should have, this is one of the things I didn't think about. So those newbies, if you do a live workshop, have it recorded because I could have put that right on there. What? Do that. <laughs> yes, yes. Those next, those, that very next live workshop you have at your house, you are, the minute you record, you speaking it doesn't matter how many people are in the room because the the camera usually is on you so nobody knows the amount of people that is are there? there you automatically become a professional speaker the moment you start recording yourself speaking not like this right because people understand this is just a collaboration or it's like a podcast yeah but it's the moment like your full body you're talking at someone, right? You're looking at uh, people other than the camera. For some reason, what it, whether it's agencies, companies, other business owners, churches, even marketing teams, immediately translate, oh, this is a keynote speaker, professional speaker. What are they talking about? I need to lean in further because it's like they're watching so as, if, as if they're in the room, right? It's amazing. Yeah. They're watching as if they're in the room. So you definitely need to uh, record that next workshop that you do. That is that is my challenge to you. Get that uh, documented mm -hmm. because that is that is gold. That is gold right there. And I've experienced it for myself. The moment I started um, going out there and speaking and getting asked to speak at churches in different um, locations and things like that, and I recorded it. Oh my goodness! People start taking you more seriously for some weird reason. Whatever you know, there's something about the stage. There's something about having the mic. There's something about other people watching while that person is watching they're like this person's probably you know legit <laughs> uh and then if they mm -hmm. lean a little further and they do a more due diligence then they get to know you know your core service and what you're offering so yeah continue continue sorry <laughs> yeah so i really um it's it's similar to you where i really feel called to inspire women a lot of women are probably like myself where they're at the, you know some points of your life you might be staying at home so you're kind of the one in charge of finances and kind of running the bills things like that not always i don't want to say that for sure there's tons of working moms and and i was that for a long time as well but we kind of tend to um kind of oversee some of that for some family. So um, definitely educators, oh my goodness, because educators, I, I just wanna show how they can, I'm, I'm, I'm working with so many younger educators now that come out with student loans. And I'm like, so that was some who were saying, but Amanda, I don't have a HELOC. I don't have, I'm interested in what you're teaching. I'm like, oh, so that was a video I'm working on. It doesn't matter. I can show you how to leverage your credit card, you know? Um, so there are ways you can do velocity banking without having a home equity line of credit. So I want to help young educators. I want to help them see, you know, what they could do even in their summers to maybe earn some more income and just think a little outside of the box for them in that way. So educators are definitely near and dear to my heart, just being an educator and teaching this to them because a lot live paycheck to paycheck. We don't make a ton of money in the field of education, right? Mm -hmm. um, but there are ways that I, I just, I, so I really want to help women. I want to help educators. Those are kind of my two main passions, I would say for sure. And moms. Mom, Love it. So. Love it. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's, it's yeah. The, my mission in, in, a, in a way has become your mission. You've customized it and just know that your impact is going to be even stronger because of that that relation, like you can relate to exactly what they're, you know, struggling in. Whereas my position, I'm, I've just been the, the child observing a mom for so many years and seeing the, the struggle, and me wanting to help solve those solutions. And I just said, uh, maybe this is my calling. I don't know. Like that's how. That's literally how it was when I first started. Nobody was like. <laughs> Denzel, you should go out and help women. Like it wasn't even, yeah. no one told me to do that. It was it was from the father purely just speaking into my life. And I just ran with it and people were resonated mm -hmm. and they ran with it. And look at you running with it. Like I just, yeah, like, I, it's so cool to see this happen. And again, this is another call out for those that are watching. 
uh, there's another mom watching just like Amanda and you've spoken to me so many calls I can think of five names right now five women I've been working with five men that I've been working Aww. with I'm like hey now is the time look at Amanda this is an example look at go to her channel look at what she's doing go to the Instagram look at what she's doing um you know check out Christy Van as well who has been yes, making I've been videos watching her and man oh, she's, she's just hump. like <laughs> rocking it Good I'm job, like Christy yes oh yes my God. it's just so cool to see yeah, it it's, it's awesome to see because you know it, and I think sometimes that's where the abundant mindset happens as well because like well Denzel's reaching everybody do you know how many people are out there like we're <laughs> all gonna hit with different people so like I want to cheer each other on right it's oh, like yeah. yes how many more people because we're all gonna connect and resonate with different people and attract different people and things like that so that's where sometimes I thought oh there's not really a need but no there is because <laughs> you know yeah there's no competition Amanda there's no mm. competition let me prove it real quick when I go to my okay. analytics when I go to my analytics on YouTube um, over the lifetime starting in 2018 till now okay. I have I have three million nine hundred eighty thousand five hundred ninety eight views so far right so nearly four million okay. views of those okay. four, of those four million views forty seven thousand nine oh two are subscribers right yeah, okay so they, so they click mm -hmm. the red button and they might have liked the video okay of that 47,902 and of the 4 million I only have a little over 7,000 people on my email list which means that they went to my website and then they filled out a contact form so I've captured their information of that 7,000 plus people only 1,500 people or less have have bought something from me at this point only 1500 or less have bought something directly from me it was coaching a call um, they bought my program or long-term coaching whatever it was so that guys like <clears throat> you could be capturing people off of my channel alone by you simply having a channel and then by you simply having a channel you're giving those other millions of people that saw my channel and maybe did not resonate and then they see you in the recommended videos and this is exactly how i increased really fast because prior to me you had kana mm -hmm. j wallace kana j wallace is another velocity banking influencer um you had mike adams uh the quok brothers yep. you had um what's his name what's his name vip financial education uh matthew, oh, yeah Ma Math Math yeah matthew yeah. Fillmore. And then um, Laura Pitko, Laura Pitko, the only like female I know talking velocity banking prior to you now and Christy, like it was just her years back. Five people, I became the sixth or the seventh talking about velocity banking and I was showing up on every one of their recommended, on their recommended videos. Cause, Cause YouTube is just handing out another option. And because maybe those five people weren't posting as much and here I am coming on the scene now I'm posting every single day because I'm new I'm trying to get out there YouTube saying these people are watching these videos and then they ran out of content to watch boom there's Denzel and then understand that as I grow guess what I used to be posting every single day now I'm not now I'm only posting three times a week so now you get a Christy Van on the scene after they've consumed all of Denzel's content and the other people. Now they have Christy. They're like, oh, what is this lady saying? Oh, and now they're just binge watching her. So when I say there's literally no competition, th there isn't. There's literally a handful of us in the space for the last two, three decades. And then on top of that, the, the people that are in the space, people that are watching a lot have not taken action yet. Why? because they don't resonate with those people yet, or maybe they can't afford those prices or services, or they just haven't been like, they haven't had the spark yet. And so someone like an Amanda, someone like a Christy Van, someone like uh, Minor Ramos and others who have started YouTube channels, when they hear their voice, right? They, people will become, I told Christy this, I said, people will become your client just because of your accent, just because of your accent. <laughs> I know yeah, people, I know, great. I know I have a lot of Spanish um, clients. Mm -hmm. They're like, Rodriguez, oh, pff, done. So it's like not even a, a question. 
So I'm like, mm -hmm. Anda, just that rapport. People look at aesthetics. People look at how you look like, and they're like, oh, she's just like me. Where's she at? Columbus, Ohio. Oh, how many people live in Columbus, Ohio? That's your whole base right there, right? Um, <laughs> and so when I say there's no competition, I just gave you guys the evidence. Go out there. It's a blue wow. ocean right now, and it's gonna stay a blue a, a blue ocean for decades to come. Um, this velocity banking is is this strategy itself. It's still so foreign, like nobody knows it, and mm -hmm. it's just ripe for the taking. Nobody's preventing you from doing this. Um, there's like a little bit of uh, some headaches with with banks, obviously, because they don't have the education. So now you can just walk up in there and say, "Hey, um, I want to do velocity banking. Give me a HELOC." So it doesn't work like that, obviously. Right, yeah. Uh, they don't have that training and it's not profitable to have a whole department train their clients on that. It's just not, it's just not profitable, it's not feasible. But it is profitable right. for the average household to have that in your mm -hmm. arsenal and you can use it, mm -hmm. you can turn it on and off. You know, that's the cool part too. Like right now in your case, when you, you basically turned off Velocity Banking, you traded in mm -hmm. that all in one. So now you have the mortgage, you're solving for a different purpose now, right? Is that the case? Mm -hmm. Or do you, or did you, yep. um, do you plan on getting a HELOC on this new home at some point? What's your plan with, with that? Yeah, once, because we renovated, so our equity's going up. So we're going to give it about six months and kind of look at that point where rates are at um, and things like that. But we also have like a pretty large credit card limit. And when, now that we know this stuff and looking at how we run our money now, because it's been weird not to have that. So in the meantime, we are, can use our credit card because we know how to do this, right? Yep. So, and we've kind of stocked a whole bunch of cash and savings for right now while we're kind of waiting to see what our next moves are um, okay. for that. So, any any uh, main kind of any main objectives? So, like you mentioned, now we're we're yeah. doing fix and flip in real estate. Husband has the continued painting business slash contracting, so yep. still doing that. You're still teaching yep. part time, right? Yeah. And and you're no full time. Oh, okay, full full time, full -time. teaching, but also yeah. building your business and creating content. Mm -hmm. So we've got about four or five streams going at this point. Right? Yep. And we um, in August bought our first triplex. So we own a nice. triplex where we have three renters. Yep. So that also has increased our cash flow. It's it's cash flowing. I think about a thousand dollars a month. So it's oh a yeah. Good we, return. We, we we definitely need yep. a session offline. We definitely need to because uh, <laughs> yeah. you can teach me some so, things. So um, yeah. Yeah, we're learning a lot. So we're newbies still, but you know, that's how you start to learn, right? You got to do it. And so we've learned some things the hard way. We've learned some things that like flips that aren't good. And you know, we, we've gone through it. It's not like it's all been a cakewalk. Um, but yeah, so we were enjoying that and kind of growing that right now, um, helping our daughter paying for college. So that's been a focus. Um, let's see, what else? Um, well, we want to have multiple streams of income. So I actually have a meeting with Alex coming up since we oh, have okay. some of that money just sitting okay. there. I want to, I have a call with him on Monday. So that's another thing we just want to, we would like to, by the end of this year, have like 10 different streams of income. That's kind of our goal for 2023. Hey, I love it. So I love it. <laughs> yeah. And so that's where we're at. <laughs> love it. Love it. Any, any, uh, final, uh, words for, for my audience, for my moms that have been watching this all the way through when they get to see another mom on screen and just your, your experience, any final words you want to, cause, cause those are the people that yeah. I know are taking the action. Um, and shout out to the dads too. Shout out to the dads that are watching this, yeah. the young folks. Okay. Um, shout out to anyone that is taking action right now in your finances. Mm -hmm. You're you're watching 40, 50, one hour clips on my channel. I know it's hard. I know it. I know in this low attention span uh, uh, <laughs> environment we live in today. But when it comes to your finances, there is it is there is no short reel that can solve for what you need to solve for you need a full blueprint analysis and there's people like myself and amanda out there that want to sit with you for hours on end and and make it happen and and because yeah. we know what that fruit would look like if we're able to invest a few hours now because when i think about it on my end amanda if i'm to go back yeah. at all of our calls i'd say it's about 10 maybe 15 hours of my time 
on those calls. I, I, I want to say we've had about maybe 10, 15 phone calls over the last from 2019 all the way up until now. It's probably safe to say maybe a little more. But in reality, it's it's that's only 10, 15 hours of my time for you. It's hundreds of hours on your finances. But mm-hmm. isn't that crazy? Just the 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 multiplication of what my time, what your time can do for the person watching this video right now, that impact. Like this is that stuff blows my mind. Those those numbers we don't read, yeah. those numbers we don't calculate mm-hmm. that the client doesn't mm-hmm. even aware, isn't even aware of until they look back and they're like, oh, wow, you know, like they, they thought I was putting in all this time. And in reality, I am just spread out over hundreds of clients, of course. Yeah. Yeah. But once you've mastered your gift, you mastered your skill and your craft. What what takes me 30 minutes under an hour to figure out may take the person watching at home by themselves 50 100 hours and so oh goodness what what, what amanda and i are trying to do is cut that time by saying hey reach out to us Mm -hmm. let's figure this out together right and i'm saying hey reach out to amanda you know let's let's she'll she'll help great because it is such a different way to bank i kind it's like a new banking strategy right and so it's scary kind of those those i remember those first things like feeling so much hope but like oh this is a big move and so some of the clients i've been working with i'm like well if you don't like it you can just put your money right back in your checking account but i guarantee you once you start practicing this you're going to be like like it was just so cool in the workshop to see like light bulb moments go off and they're like oh my gosh i'm getting it now like this like (laughs) Cause they were like, wait, what are you, you know? And then you just start to see the light bulbs going off, you know? So what I would say to your audience is Denzel is the real deal. And you know, he is a, a young man of integrity. He's put in tons of time and has given so much value and so much of his time as a ministry and just um, pouring out to really want to help moms. And so if you're a mom out there and you have not started, you know, utilizing this strategy or made that call to Denzel, you know, make the call. Now is the time, you know, we don't know what tomorrow brings, but get ready, get ready now. Right. And I remember so many of your videos, like if we're doing the work now, when the, if a big recession comes and all these things were prepared. So like when that, that was such a blessing when COVID hit, right. It was like, oh my gosh, we put in the time, we put in the work. Now look, we're not stressed right now. Mm-hmm. We, we can actually enjoy three weeks. It felt like, you know, I mean, I was teaching, so I wasn't like just sitting there doing nothing, but you know, we had family time that we would have not been able to have if we were stressed and didn't know how to, you know, we were just able to relax and enjoy that time as a family. So put in the work now, reach out to Denzel now. Um, if you've been on the fence, he, he will help you look at what he's done for our family, you know, and, and wow. Denzel, I, I literally, I, I, I don't have enough gratitude to even express to you because if you wouldn't have taken that action, right. I, this wasn't, I'm not kidding. When I say you were an answer to prayer, like I, I really like only God knows where I was at at that time. And you were who I was brought to. And that to me was not a coincidence, right? But if Divine you appointment. said, oh. <laughs> Yeah, the divine appointments. And if you would have said, no, I'm just 22 years old. I think you were at the time. I don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> I remember thinking, about, I'm really, I'm yeah, really yeah. humble on myself. But, but you were wise beyond your years. And we all know that. We always say Denzel's like a 40 something year old and like a younger guy, right? <laughs> um, you're wise beyond your years. Yeah. Um, and now you have a lot, lots of clients that you've helped to all different ages. But anyway, that's what I would say. Take the time, invest in yourself. Um, you know, we, we're not promised tomorrow. This is not a scare thing or anything like that, but you know, prepare yourself now, get things ready now. I think finances are one of those things. You just keep kind of like pushing it off. It's, it's kind of like taxes, right? Oh, <laughs> who wants to sit down and do their taxes? But when you're, it, it can, it can just open up. Like if you take the time and invest, it can open up just so much hope and so much opportunity. If you take the time now to get it or, you know, organized and, um, and start utilizing the velocity banking strategy. Maybe there's a business you want to do that, yeah. you know, I'm sure there's moms that you, that you've been talking to that they are, they, they're they right know there. who they it's are. Like they know who yeah, they are. They're going to comment video. on this video. <laughs> they yes. know who they are. Okay. Uh, I can't wait. I so can't we wait. want you to say, I'm doing it now. There's no more waiting. There's nothing to fear. You mm-hmm. have a message and a, that you're supposed to share with the world. So do it now. Oh, yes. We'll close out right there. That is beautiful. All right. I'll, I'll have links 
in the in the comment to in the comment section in the chat for those to to reach out to amanda on the screen as well so you guys know where to find her uh shout out to you everything that you're doing god bless you and and i just i'm so yeah. looking forward to the immense amount of fruit that you're going to produce over the next five years just looking back over from 2019 to 2023 we're just beginning like this is the the, the crazy all the amount of work we've done we haven't even started yet in terms of what you're going to be able to build over the next five years. So when we look back on the decade, oh my goodness. And I can't wait to uh, have the opportunity awesome. to meet in person, give you a big hug, meet the whole family, and maybe oh. even have a whole workshop together. Who knows, right? But that oh, possibility awesome. is there, right? The possibility is there. So I'm so excited. Thank you so much for being a part of Thank this you. and recording with me today. And God bless everyone else. We'll be talking soon.